Okay, so welcome to part two of this Windows Virtual Desktop Deployment Guide. In this section, we'll be running through deploying the storage for your FSLogix profiles and also for any shared documents, for example, departmental uh, documentation that you may have. There are a few assumptions made here. Uh, firstly, that you already have an Active Directory that you're going to use, whether that's either Azure Active Directory or you're using an on-premise Active Directory. Um, secondly, just a quick note, if you are using Azure AD, ensure that you are using Azure AD domain services as well and that you have that deployed to the same VNet or a peered VNet that you'll be using Azure NetApp files in. Um, the reason behind that is because when you're using uh, AD domain services, you'll be given two IP addresses which you'll need in the next step so that you can deploy the SMB uh, volumes correctly. So the very first step here is to click on Azure NetApp Files. If you don't have it right at the top bar, it's very easy to uh, click. Remembering this is a first party Microsoft service. Uh, go to All Services, click on Storage, and you'll see Microsoft offer Azure NetApp Files there. Just please note, it's not sold by NetApp, it's not supported by NetApp. This is a Microsoft first party service, uh, just like a virtual machine, just like normal storage accounts. So with Azure NetApp Files, um, you'll see the very first step here is to go and create uh, a storage account, a NetApp storage account. Now, at time of recording, there are now 11 regions. I'm going to deploy in Western Europe. This is where my Windows Virtual Desktop environment actually resides. The very first thing to do, if you haven't already, is to create a capacity pool. Now, as it says here, a capacity pool is effectively you are going to micro asking Microsoft to purchase a pool of capacity, but also a pool of performance, as the performance is per terabyte provisioned. So you can think of these as a capacity slash performance pool. Once you've gone and uh, ta taken that performance pool from Microsoft, uh, you'll, you'll have a range from four terabytes up to uh, 500 terabytes per, uh, per capacity pool. You'll then have to go and create a volume um, for our Windows Virtual Desktop FS Logix profiles. So if we call this, for example, Windows Virtual Desktop uh, FS Logix, um, we're going to take that out of the capacity pool we've just provisioned and give it a size. Remember, the size of the volume dictates how much performance you're going to get. So I've done two terabytes here, so I'm going to get two times the SLA that I picked for my capacity pool. That, remembering that can be standard premium or ultra. Next, and this is fairly important, this is going to be the virtual network that you're deploying, securely deploying your Azure NetApp files into, remembering it's a private IP, it does not traverse the internet it's already on the inside of your VNet uh, very securely, so it's much the same as having uh, your storage and your compute connected to your IP SAN effectively as you would on premise. So here I've deployed mine, and I'm going to deploy mine in my hub. And you'll see here I already have a delegated subnet. If you don't, you can create one using this button. You have to delegate at least um, one, one subnet to Azure NetApp Files, and that's where it will consume its private IP addresses from. So the storage questions here, we need SMB. We're going to pick the Active Directory, which we've set up uh, earlier. So here I've got Azure NetApp Files. If you're not aware of how to do that, check out one of my other videos, um, link down below of how to uh, set up your Active Directory, and then we give it a name. Next, we have support for all the Azure tagging, and then we would simply just go and create. Okay, so in just a few minutes, you'll see that your deployment's now complete. You've deployed enterprise class, highly available SMB storage directly into your Azure that you can use for your FS Logics profiles.